Oh, hi there. Lost media only comes from obscure places, right? The truth is, even the most popular and influential pieces of media can become lost, and I'm here to prove it with 10 successful TV series that for whatever reason have missing episodes. Almost all the videos I make are because of fan suggestions, so let me know what you want to see in a future video in the comments or find me on Twitter at Lost Media Mike. So here are 10 popular TV shows with lost episodes. Mommy and Daddy told me that they decided not to be married to each other anymore. Of course, we can't talk about lost TV shows without bringing up Sesame Street. There are a ton of episodes I could bring up, but I'm going to focus on the only episode of Sesame Street to ever have been unreleased. Episode 2985, titled Snuffy's Parents Get a Divorce, was pulled before airing after extremely negative reactions from multiple test screenings. As the title suggests, the episode tackles the subject of divorce, but they must have done a really bad job because test screenings were so bad, kids thought their own parents didn't love them anymore and that they were going to get a divorce. It was decided that the subject matter was too difficult for children and replaced with an episode where Janali helps Hoots the Owl in Birdland. The subject matter was successfully attempted in 2012, this time with a limited audience, resource guide, and character Abby Kadabi discussing her parents' divorce. Outside of the test screenings, the episode hasn't been seen again until 2009 when a single screenshot was released in the publication Sesame Street, A Celebration, 40 Years of Life on the Street. The episode was finally shown in its entirety in 2019 as part of a Lost and Found event celebrating the 50th anniversary of Sesame Street along with the infamous Lost Wicked Witch of the West episode. This event was very controversial because it demonstrated that Sesame Street has some of the most sought after pieces of Lost media in their possession but for whatever reason they are unwilling to release them. No one made a bootlegged recording of the event so don't even go looking for it, you definitely won't find a video on YouTube that may not be entirely legal. We now have someone in office who can bring about gender equality and put an end to sexism. Please welcome Bill Clinton. South Park is known for being very on top of world events, sometimes making an episode about an event days or even hours after it happens. Some of their best work comes from their political episodes based on the presidential elections in the United States. Their episode in 2008, About Last Night, featured elements of Obama's victory speech less than 24 hours after it happened. But this episode was based on the assumption that Obama would win the presidency. This time their gamble paid off, Obama won and the episode made sense. However, this approach did not work for the 2016 presidential election. For the seventh episode of season 20, show creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker based the episode on the assumption that Hillary Clinton would win the 2016 election as most polls predicted. The episode, originally called The Very First Gentleman, featured Bill Clinton as the first gentleman of the United States. The episode was reworked at the last minute to have Donald Trump, played by Mr. Garrison, winning, but still features Bill Clinton, now with Bill Cosby too. In an interview on the Bill Simons podcast, the creators revealed they had to rework about two-thirds of the episode. It's unknown what parts of the episode were rewritten and reanimated because the only surviving clip comes from the trailer of PC Principal introducing Bill Clinton as the first gentleman. In my opinion, this lack of foresight really ruined the rest of the season as it seemed like the creators had a hard time piecing everything together as well as they had in previous seasons. Let me know what you think. Did you like season 20? In my opinion, it's probably one of the weaker seasons of South Park. America's Most Wanted aired from 1988 to 2012 and was Fox's longest running TV show at the time with 25 seasons. The show featured fugitives on the run with reenactments of their crime, urging viewers to call the America's Most Wanted hotline if they had any tips on the case. The show is notable for its long-serving host, John Walsh, who before hosting the series founded the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children after his six-year-old son was kidnapped and murdered in 1981. While researching this video, I actually found out the producers of the show had considered a number of political hosts for the series, most notably Senator Chuck Robb and Rudy Giuliani, which seems so strange now. The show was initially met with doubt that it would be effective in catching criminals, but just four days after the show aired, David James Robert, a criminal on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives, was caught directly due to the show and the series would go on to help catch 1,203 fugitives. Despite being one of the most important and meaningful shows in TV history, over 1,000 episodes are unaccounted for. Due to the relevant and urgent nature of the show, no home media release is expected. To further complicate the search effort, there is no clear list of all the missing episodes. A revival of the show was recently announced and scheduled for March 2021, hosted by investigative reporter Elizabeth Vargas.
Sazai-san is a long-running anime based on Machigo Hasegawa's manga of the same name. The show has been running for so long that in 2013 it was awarded the Guinness World Record for longest-running animated TV series in the world, and it's still going today with over 2,000 episodes since its airing in 1969. The show centers around Japanese housewife Sazai Fuguta and in general is a throwback to traditional Japanese life. While the show is very popular in Japan, it is basically unheard of outside the country due to the creator requesting that the show not be localized or dubbed and the show not receive a home media release. This means that most episodes only air once and any attempt to collect and record episodes has been taken down by the rights holders. However, in recent years, 200 episodes from 2005 to 2008 can be streamed on Japanese Amazon Prime. I've covered this series in previous videos, so I wanted to shine some light on other lost media associated with Sazai-san. Just like the anime, other adaptations have not been preserved, removed from the internet by the rights holders, or simply never released after their initial airing. There is very little information about these other adaptations, but I'll tell you what I can find. Prior to being made into the popular anime, the manga was adapted into a radio drama in 1955 that I can find absolutely no information on. The series also has a number of live action projects that don't seem to be archived either. A short-lived TV series that premiered the same year as the radio drama, a TV series that ran from 1965 to 1967, a six-month-long series about the creation of the anime, and three live-action specials from 2009 to 2011. These live-action specials are the only one that seems to have been preserved. Thanksgiving. When families come together, eat a bunch of food with gravy on it, and ask, whatever happened to G4? Attack of the Show was a live variety series airing on the now defunct G4 network. The show discussed video games, movies, and pop culture, along with helping launch the career of Olivia Munn. The show was one of the network's most popular series, and despite the network moving away from video game related content, the show proved popular enough to keep around. Like a lot of live variety shows, due to how often they're aired and a lack of home media release, a ton of the episodes are missing. Luckily, user Chuck85 uploaded 671 episodes that aired from 2008 to 2013 to archive org, preserving a large chunk of the episodes, but still leaving over half unaccounted for. In 2020, it was announced that G4 would be returning in 2021, leading the network to privatize and take down Attack of the Show videos on YouTube. I doubt this means we'll start seeing reruns of Attack of the Show on the new G4, but I'm excited to see what a rebooted G4 would look like since it's a really nostalgic part of my childhood. Oh, and Conan, one more thing. You better be as good as Letterman. Even though The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien was the shortest lived iteration of the long running Tonight Show series, Conan has a devoted fan base and proved to be a staple of late night TV for decades. Following Jay Leno's original tenure on The Tonight Show in 2009, the show was briefly taken over by Conan O'Brien before being taken back by Leno less than a year later, leading to a much publicized feud. During a September 2009 taping of the show, Conan was doing a skit with Terry Hatcher involving a triathlon, ending with a race in the studio. At the end of the fake race, Conan fell and hit his head very hard, leading to a concussion where he was unable to finish the episode, having to go to the hospital. The network decided to air a rerun rather than the unfinished episode. In the following episode, Conan addressed the incident and briefly showed a clip of his injury. To this day, this is the only clip we have of the episode. And it is actually kind of hard to watch. Conan is clearly injured and even slurs his speech when trying to recover. Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. Like so many other shows produced by the BBC, there is a ton of lost media around the Top Gear series. I'm going to focus on the original run from 1977 to 2002. The show had numerous hosts, notably William Woolard and Jeremy Clarkson, but when the show was first aired on regional TV, it was hosted by Kelly Rippon and was later picked up by the BBC and broadcast nationally. Despite its popularity, there were very few VHS releases made for the show. This means that most of the early episodes only have a chance of survival through home recordings, resulting in over half of all episodes from the show's original run to become lost. Since the BBC stopped their practice of destroying and reusing master tapes in 1978, they are likely still in possession of the Top Gear tapes, making the show not technically lost, but with how old and outdated the show's advice is, a slew of rights holders for various aspects of the show, and no home media or streaming release in over 40 years, it seems more and more likely every day that the BBC will allow early episodes of Top Gear to become permanently lost.
game shows have a long history of being lost. Between the 40s and 80s, most game show episodes were wiped, recorded over, or destroyed. Sadly, the long-running game show Wheel of Fortune is among the lost shows. Created by comedian Merv Griffin, Wheel of Fortune first aired in 1965 and is still spinning today as one of TV's highest rated programs. The show was originally hosted by Chuck Woolery and Susan Staffer before being replaced by Pat Sajak and Vanna White in the early 80s, who both still host the show today. By the 80s, most major networks ended their practice of reusing old master tapes, but Merv Griffin Productions continued to wipe episodes of Wheel of Fortune until at least 1985. This has resulted in numerous episodes of the show's first 10 years being lost, most of which only survive from home recordings. Besides the show's earliest episodes, one infamous lost segment comes from the November 1992 Round 2 puzzle. The puzzle was an announcement that Vanna was pregnant. Tragically, soon after the recording of the episode, Vanna would suffer a miscarriage, leading the segment to never be seen by the public, though completely finished. There has been an effort to make a master list of all the missing and found episodes, but due to the limited information on these early episodes, it's unknown how many were made and how many are missing. He did his job well with a cheerful face, but his bosses didn't like him, so they shot him in the space. Mystery Science Theater 3000 is a cult comedy show based around a man and his robot companions watching and making fun of old B-movies, many of which were brought out of obscurity due to their exposure from the show. The series got its start on local TV station KTMA in Minnesota before being picked up by the Comedy Channel that later became Comedy Central. The series wouldn't get a home media release until 1996, and even then the releases were slow due to licensing issues with the movies featured on the show. But the original KTMA seasons were excluded from all home media release, only surviving through homemade tapes. The rarest of the KTMA tapes were the first three episodes. They were aired only twice, once during their premiere, and later the same night. During a Reddit AMA, show creator Joel Hodgson was asked about releasing the three missing episodes and responded, I see no reason to look at the KTMA episodes other than for academic reasons. It was profoundly important for the development of movie riffing, but they are hard to watch if you ask me. Not too long after the Reddit AMA, the first two episodes were discovered in 2016 and released through the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Revival Kickstarter, leaving Episode 3, Star Force Fugitive Alien 2, the only one still missing. A release was planned that would include all the KTMA episodes, but the release was cancelled due to the poor quality of the master tapes. Clips from Episode 3 were posted on the official website, but since the episode has never been released after all these years, it might be possible that the master tapes for the episode were destroyed or damaged, leaving it forever lost. Imagine a world where your greatest fears become reality. Welcome to Fear Factor. Before becoming everyone's high older brother, comedian Joe Rogan hosted the very popular game show, Fear Factor. Each episode had six contestants, three men and three women, competing in three extreme stunts. Some of the most memorable stunts featured gross out challenges, and the last person standing wins $50,000. Episodes were hard to come by until 2010 when the Chiller channel began broadcasting reruns and Hulu eventually added the show for streaming. But despite the streaming release and fan recordings, one episode of the show is still lost. Fear Factor Spring Break 2002 Very little information is known about the episode, and everything we do know comes from less than reliable sources. The episode reportedly featured four contestants in Cancun competing for 50,000 pesos, with all gross out stunts. The winner was reportedly a man named D. Morris, and according to TV.com, the stunts were Squid Jacuzzi, where contestants would go in a tub of dead squid, take off their bathing suit, find another one in the tub, and put it on. Blender of Fear, drinking a Fear Factor milkshake that the crew made, and Snake Face Off, bobbing for plums in a tank full of water snakes. Hulu stated they were unable to get the rights of the episode, and there are currently no clips or screenshots available. Thank you so much for watching. I obviously left out a huge number of popular TV shows with lost episodes, so let me know your favorites and you might see it when I make a part two. This is Mike with All Things Lost. See you soon.